here. Okay. So what that will do is it will create the branch, it's 53, and it, uh, it moves head over to it. But then it also does something else uh, that's a little bit weird, which is it makes your working directory look like this snapshot. Right? So every time you do a checkout, every time you say hit check out some branch name, it's going to make your working directory look like whatever that, the snapshot of that branch is, right? that, that pointer points to. So if we've added a file and then modified some file or something, it's going to undo that and make our working directory look like that again. It will remove the new files from our working directory and revert the changes to any files that have changed on that branch since then. Does that make sense? Even a committed file? Um, not on uncommitted files. If you have modified files in your working directory that this will not cleanly go back to, um, it will not allow you to switch the branch. In this case, since it's a direct ancestor, it will always allow us to go back because it hasn't, the, the work hasn't diverted uh, or di diverged. Um, and so that, what that will allow us to do is, is modify files if we're on a branch we didn't need to be on and we modify some files and we check out another branch. If it can, it will allow us to switch to that branch and then record the changes there. So sometimes you can do it and sometimes you can't. If you can't do it um, and you need to switch branches, you can run the aforementioned git stash, which will stash away the changes, the uncommitted changes you have, and then later on you can say git stash apply and it will reapply them. Right? So you can clean your working directory, switch branches, do something, and then go back and then reapply the, the stash changes. Yeah. Can I have multiple working directories, like for master and for IATM? Multiple working what? Directories. Um, you can. Um, not easily. It's not built into Git to have multiple working directories for one repository. Um, I mean, you can do a clone. You can do a local clone and do work and then push back. So that's, that's the easiest way to do it. And that's very similar to like how Mercurial says to do branching. Um, and, and, and other systems as well. So you can do it that way if you want to. Uh, you can either have two clones of the same repository, you can clone once and then clone locally, and then and then once you've committed, push back to your original one, and then push from there back to the, the server, if you want to do that. So there are a couple different options. There are also in Git, if you get the Git source code, there's a contrib directory, and there is a git new worker script that will give you a new working directory for the same repository. And then as you're doing commits, it, it is mirrored in both of them. Yeah. You can actually do that just in the environment variable, but I think that's on a scale right now. But it's it's possible. Yeah, you have to do you have to do git work tree. Well, because if you're in a different directory and your git directory is somewhere else, you can do git work tree, git dir, and git index. Right. So you have to set three environment variables. So you could do it that way, but it's I mean it's such a pain. That's basically what git new worker does, is it it gives you a thing and sets up some signaling so that it goes into the same thing. But so you can't. It's most likely just you'll do local clones. Um, it's most likely you'll stash and you'll never actually do that. I, I know very few people that want multiple working directories for one repository, just because stashing and switching branches is so fast and easy to do that it's much more likely that you'll be doing that instead. So now, if we've created a new branch, we switch our working directory looks like that snapshot now. Yeah. Uh, some people might want to break. Is, is this a good point for doing that? What's that? Can you copy break? Yes, sorry, copy break. 3.30, thank you very much. Okay, so 10 minutes.